Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have this haunting call. Whales truly are some of the coolest animals on earth, and humpback whales are no exception. The males of the species are known for their songs, which last from 10 to 20 minutes and are actually pretty complex. They will repeat these songs for hours at a time, and it honestly isn't exactly known why they sing these songs at all. All the males in the group will produce the same song and it will change seasonally. The females are also able to produce noise, but for some reason, it is only the males who seem to produce these long songs. It is unclear how the whales even produce these sounds however, because they don't actually have vocal cords. This is all super cool and interesting, but the whole reason you're here is for the sound, so let's take a listen to a more haunting track released by the humpback whale. Okay, so please tell me I'm not alone in thinking that that was the most beautifully haunting sound I've ever heard come from the sea. But also imagine being alone in the ocean, not knowing what that was, and then hearing it. Probably pretty terrifying, right? At least we're all safe here in YouTube land. In our number 9 spot today, we have this marine chorus. Okay, so out of context, if I played you this sound, what would you think it is? Definitely not something underwater, right? Well, as it turns out, this sound was indeed captured under the water, and these are the sounds of fish calls. While I always expected the chorus of marine animals to sound a little more similar to the stylings of Sebastian the Crab, apparently that isn't even close. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even know that most fish had calls, but it turns out that our human ears just can't perceive all of the hoots, moans, barks, and chirps that take place in the vast seas. This recording actually helped scientists realize that there are fish who sing together in a chorus every day at dusk and dawn. There have now been around 800 species of fish that have been identified and confirmed to make some form of noise, and apparently some fish even engage in shouting matches in noisier parts of the ocean, which is kind of hilarious to imagine. I guess on the list of creepy noises, this one is less creepy and more just informative? In our number 8 spot today we have the whistle. This is a sound that was first recorded in 1997 by the NOAA and was the source of many mysteries for years while people speculated about what may have caused the sound. While it still isn't exactly clear, it is now believed that the sound may have come from an underwater volcano eruption. If you didn't know, underwater or submarine volcanoes are located in all oceans on our earth and they're extremely interesting. There are certain kinds of marine animals that only exist near these extreme environments. Many submarine volcanoes are located near the areas of tectonic plate formations, which are also known as mid-ocean ridges. There is a YouTube user called Some Canadian, and they left a comment on a video of this whistle sound that pretty much sums it up exactly. First, we'll listen to the sound played at 10 times the original speed. The comment read, quote, it could be the sound of something moving through tunnels. One, volcanic eruptions and gases. Two, something big and hungry. You choose. I think they might really be onto something there. In our number seven spot today, we have Bloop. Why are all of the weirdest ocean sounds first recorded in 1997? Bloop is another one that came from that year, and it was a loud and unusual sound that was placed as occurring several times off the southern coast of South America, and it was so loud that it could be heard over 5,000 kilometers away. At first, researchers were confused because while the sound was actually similar to known sounds of living creatures, it was just way too loud that not even the blue whale, the largest living creature, could have produced it. So what is it then? Well, as it turns out, it is in fact not the kraken, and instead it is actually consistent with ice quakes that are generated by large icebergs as they crack and fracture. It seems like this sound going with that explanation doesn't really make sense, but hey, I'm no scientist. But here's the sound for you to judge for yourself. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Western Pacific Bio Twang. In 2014, researchers and scientists heard weird sounds coming from the Mariana Trench, which, for the record, seems like the worst place for there to be strange noises coming from. For years, experts couldn't pin down this sound, and it was dubbed the Western Pacific Bio Twang, and while there is now a theory that was proposed by researchers from Oregon State University, they have also said that they might be entirely wrong. First, for reference, here's a little clip of the sound I'm talking about. 
Okay, so if you're like me, my mind immediately went to something alien related or some sort of creature that perhaps we haven't yet discovered. I mean, this is the Mariana Trench we're talking about. The theory put forward by the Oregon State researchers was that perhaps this may be a new type of baleen whale call. Okay, that's probably the best of all of the options, but I really don't like when someone tells me the answer to a scientific mystery only to tell me that that might not actually be the answer at all. While the low part of the sound would make sense to attribute to the baleen whale, it's the end high pitched twangy part that would be incredibly unique. The wide range of frequencies in the sound are what continues to baffle those who are trying to find the source of this mysterious sound. In our number five spot today, we have Julia. Julia is a sound that was recorded in 1999 by the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, which I've already talked about today. It sounds like it could be straight out of a horror movie, so considering it was a sound that came from our ocean, and at first no one could tell where it had come from, it really was quite frightening. The sound has now likely been demystified as researchers are pretty positive they know the origin of it. It is now believed that the sound was caused by an iceberg running aground off Antarctica. The sound, however, was insanely loud. It was so loud that it could be heard over the entire Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array. Researchers were later able to narrow down what they believe may have been the point where the sound originated, although they've never actually been able to pinpoint it exactly. Most of the time when people hear the Julia sound, they hear it sped up at 16 times the original speed, but today we are going to listen to a clip of the sound at regular speed because I think it is much more eerie this way. In our number four spot today, we have Knock. Okay, this is one that I'll admit was not captured by a submarine, but it was still underwater and it truly is terrifying. A few years ago, a beluga whale named Nock, who was unfortunately in captivity, was recorded as he swam below the water. Beluga whales have been called the canaries of the sea, and for good reason, but Nock really wanted to up the ante and instead blessed us all with this sound. <laughs> Nock had this uncanny ability to mimic the rhythm and tone of human voices, and it truly is kind of frightening. It of course is also a little sad, as part of this was probably because he spent most of his life being forced to listen to humans speak because he was being held in captivity. Before this recording of Nock, the voices of belugas and their sometimes human-like sounds have been talked about, but Nock was the first time it was recorded, and honestly, I kind of wish it hadn't been. In our number three spot today, we have the bioduck. Since the 1960s, this sound has absolutely stumped researchers who heard it. This sound was basically what the name attributed to it would suggest. It sounded like some sort of mechanical duck. For decades, researchers would hear this sound and it would often be heard and recorded again in the spring and winters. After all of these years though, it seems as though the answers to this mysterious sound are finally coming to light. In 2013, researchers attached sensors that collect acoustic data to two whales. One of those tags recorded for 18 hours and the other for 8, and the whales they were attached to were traveling with other whales in groups of 5 to 40, and they were all eating basically the entire time. Throughout this time, with the tags on the whales, there were a total of 32 calls heard, and this data is what led researchers to finally understand where the bioduck sound was coming from. As it turns out, this mysterious sound was actually the call of the mink whale. Researchers still aren't exactly clear as to what the call means to the whales, but it was a fantastic discovery that finally closed an almost 50 year old scientific mystery. In our number two spot today, we have Upsweep. We all know how little we know about the ocean, and that also includes what kind of creatures lie in it. So while this mysterious sound, out of context probably wouldn't be that freaky, when put into this situation it becomes quite a bit more eerie. This sound is referred to as upsweep and it was caught when the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory started its sound surveillance system in August of 1991. The sound is apparently more seasonal with its peaks in spring and fall, but it is unclear if the changing of seasons is responsible for this sound or if it's coming from something that lurks in the ocean and remains undiscovered. Just for reference, here's a clip of that sound played at 20 times the the original speed. Oh. 
It is possible that this sound could be coming from underwater volcanic activity, but it is also possible that it's not, so who really knows? In our number one spot today, we have an earthquake. Okay, so to add another creepy Mariana Trench sound to this list, we have one that was taken from the bottom of the Challenger Deep. In fact, it was the first ever sound recording to be taken from the bottom of the Challenger Deep, so it's a pretty cool scientific advancement as well as a terrifying sound. Despite the crushing pressures and the fact that there's no sunlight, the Challenger Deep is actually pretty noisy, and that is because of the fact that sound travels a really long way underwater, which ends up kind of turning the Challenger Deep into a sort of echo chamber of oceanic sounds. So while the recording was able to pick up things like the sound of a boat almost 11 kilometers overhead and the sounds of whale calls, they were also able to pick up the sound of a magnitude 5 earthquake rumbling near Guam on July 16th, 2015. gonna lie, while being one of the scariest things I've ever heard, this is also one of the coolest things I've ever heard in my life too. Science really is just so cool sometimes. Starting off this list, in our number 10 spot we have the train. The train is a sound that was first recorded on March 5th, 1997. It is often referred to as the train because, well, it kind of sounds like a train's whistle, or maybe like the sound of the wheels grinding against the tracks, but in my opinion, it just sounds like a ghost meetup. Despite the years it's been since this sound was captured, no one is entirely sure where it came from. The current belief is that it may have been from an extremely large iceberg in the Ross Sea near Cape Adair, but that is still only a guess. The steady hum might be the sound of the keel of an iceberg dragging across the sea floor. But what if it's not? In our number 9 spot today we have this underwater knocking. This knocking sound was picked up by an underwater hydrophone, and for a while it had people stumped until they were able to find the culprit. Before we talk about what this sound is coming from, imagine being in the deep, dark, icy waters and hearing that sound. It is straight up out of a horror movie, but as it turns out, the real source isn't quite as scary. This is actually the sound of a species of haddock fish. These types of haddock are a ray finned fish that can be found in the North Atlantic Ocean. The males of the species will produce this drumming or pulsating sound in order to attract mates during the mating season. Outside of the mating season, a similar sound is also produced, and that is known to be used during a aggressive encounters with other male fish. In our number 8 spot today we have the 52 Hertz whale. This whale has been nicknamed the loneliest whale in the world, but the truth is, we don't even really know if that's true because we've never actually seen it. This whale, which we don't know if it's male or female or what whale species it belongs to, sings its song like no other whale does. This whale was first heard in 1989 on a hydrophone, and while the calls were most similar to that of a blue whale, there was one striking difference and that was the frequency of the calls. This whale calls at 52 hertz with regular blue whales calling between 10 and 40 hertz. Even fin whales are usually heard at 20 hertz, so it left everyone stumped as to what could be going on here. A researcher named Bill Watkins dedicated his life to trying to reveal what exactly was going on here, and while he passed away in 2004, he found that this whale was not only unusual, but totally unique. The biggest challenge is the fact that we cannot locate this whale. Their calls can be heard for hundreds of miles and trying to find one single whale in the vastness of the ocean is next to impossible. Many people have suggested that perhaps the whale is deaf, and this is what has led to its unique song, but of course without the whale, how would we possibly know for sure? In our number 7 spot today we have Slow Down. Slow Down is another sound that was captured in 1997, but this one was captured on May 19th of that year. The 90s was apparently the height of the capturing weird unexplained ocean sounds wave because wow, there are so many. This sound got its name because of the fact that the sound descends in frequency over about 7 minutes. Again, the 
This is another sound I would have just assumed was ghosts, but luckily there are people out there who know more than me who continue to research these things and try to get to the bottom of these mysteries. This sound was so loud it was detected by different sensors nearly 5,000 kilometers apart from each other. Scientists were able to locate the sound as coming from somewhere off the Antarctic Peninsula. While they couldn't directly find the source of the sound, they used their deductive reasoning and it is currently believed that the sound might have been the result of a drifting iceberg as it scratched the sea floor until it slowly came to a stop. I guess the icebergs were just moving around a lot in the mid to late 90s. In our number 6 spot today we have the sigh whale. Here we are again with another whale sound that just truly doesn't seem like it should be the sound coming out of any living creature, but hey, in the sea the rules are just different and everything's a little weirder. These whales can be found in subtropical, temperate and subpolar waters around the world. They are sadly a species that has seen their numbers decrease rapidly, especially due to the historical commercial whaling that took place in the 19th and 20th centuries. The exact number of these whales that currently exist is unknown, but they are a species that is currently listed as being threatened. Like many other whales, these guys use their voice to communicate with one another, and that is where this sound comes from. Other than the sound that they're making, the increase in noise under the water, especially man-made noise, is actually a threat to their existence. The sound can interrupt their normal behavior and drive them away from areas that are important to their survival, and sometimes intense exposure to noise can even cause one of these whales to strand and die, which truly is just awful. In our number 5 spot today we have Star Wars. Okay, you might be wondering why something relating to Star Wars is on this list since we are talking about the sea, but just listen to the sound and then tell me what you think. That sounds kind of like little fighter jets or something, right? Well, it definitely had some people stumped for a while when it was first heard, but luckily this one has a fairly simple and harmless explanation. The Star Wars sound is actually coming from dwarf mink whales. Apparently a lot of strange ocean noises end up either being attributed to whales or icebergs. Considering how creepy this sound can be when they have no explanation, I'm kind of glad to know that most things end up being relatively harmless and way less scary in reality. In our number 4 spot today we have the Atlantic Cod. Atlantic Cod are known for their ability to produce clicks, growls and thumps as their way of communicating. The clicks I'm about to show you are apparently intended to ward off potential predators including humans and I truly feel like it might be working. While this sound was recorded on a hydrophone, it's been said that divers who have encountered these fish in the ocean have also been able to hear these warning clicks so as to let them know not to get close. These fish also of course have different less aggressive sounds as well that they use for things like mating season or to be able to warn others of their kind of potential dangers that are lurking in the icy waters. In our number 3 spot today we have the ping. This is a sound that no one has been able to figure out where it is coming from. I'll admit this one wasn't captured by a submarine, but I had to include it because it is coming from the water and it is so mysterious that scientists and even the military still aren't sure what exactly is going on here. This sound can be heard in the Kikitalik region of the Canadian territory Nunavut and is coming from the Fury and Hecla Strait. This sound has been described by some as a ping and by others as a hum, but the main issue is that this area is a hunting area and whatever the sound is, it is scaring off all of the wildlife. Because of the reports of this mysterious sound, even the military came to investigate, but still, no one is exactly sure where this sound could have been coming from or what it could be linked to. For now, the mysteries that lay below the Arctic ice are destined to remain a secret. In our number 2 spot today we have, hmm? This sound is one that was captured on a hydrophone and it truly sounds like someone just trying to add some infliction to their voice to ask a question. I'll give you one second to take a guess first. Did you guess another whale? Well, you'd be right then. This sound is coming from the North Atlantic right whale and is not just the sound of a super confused person. These whales are one of the world's endangered large whale species with there being only 400 left in the Atlantic Ocean. The sound you just heard is the sound they use to communicate with others of their species. Their sounds are usually low frequency moans or groans and they are used to indicate things like warnings, contact, aggression or just other social 
social signals in general. In our number one spot today, we have boom. Okay, maybe the last one was a little too easy, so here's another sound that I'm gonna let you guess, and maybe it will be a little harder this time. Do you have a guess as to what that big boom was? Apparently, that sound was caught on a hydrophone and it is coming from an underwater oil rig. Remember when we were talking about the man made sound pollution of the deep sea and how it affects the marine life? This is exactly the kind of thing we were talking about. I don't have the solution on how to make it better or how to fix the problem. All I know is that it is one, and honestly, how could it not be? That sound freaked me out while I was sitting comfortably at my desk researching, so I can imagine hearing it when I wasn't expecting it in the comfort of my own home. That just sounds awful. All right, let's get into today's list. Starting off at our number 10 spot, we have the deepest known shipwreck. Who knows how many shipwrecks lay in our oceans, considering many of them have yet to be found. The USS Johnston was a US Navy destroyer, which sank during the Battle of Samar in 1944 after a battle with a large fleet of Japanese warships. Victor Vescovo, who is one of the few people who have made the dive into the Mariana Trench, was one of the people who first stumbled upon the remains of this sunken warship. The ship's remains were first found in 2019 and it is now known as the deepest known shipwreck as it was found 6,456 meters deep in the Philippine Sea in the Pacific Ocean. Victor, who led the expedition, said, quote, The wreck is so deep that there's very little oxygen down there, and while there is a little bit of contamination from marine life, it's remarkably well intact except for the damage it took from the furious fight, end quote. This ship is so deep it took a few dives in order for them to be able to relocate the ship, which they have now been able to do entirely. There were 327 crew members on board this ship during the battle, and sadly only 141 of them survived. The diving team was sure to be respectful about their mission and laid wreaths both before and after their dives, which is just a nice note to end off this point on. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Baltic Sea Anomaly. In 2011, while searching for treasure in the Baltic Sea, these divers came across something super weird. It was a 70 meter long object laying 300 feet below the sea, and to this day, no one knows for sure what it is. It's a massive disc shaped metal object, and while it certainly is weird to find a huge underwater structure that no one can identify, the weirdest part about this story is that those who found it claim that their equipment stopped working only when they were around this massive unknown structure. There was some sort of electrical interference, but only when they got close or directly above it. Some people believe it's either a glacial deposit, which is the result of thawing glaciers or an alien spacecraft. I'll let you guys decide on this one. UFO or glacial deposit? I'm gonna go with UFO because that is way more exciting. In our number 8 spot today we have a USO. Daryl Miklos is an explorer who took a deep dive following maps that had been put together by his friend and former astronaut Gordon Cooper. The map Daryl was using was initially made to help identify more than 100 magnetic anomalies in the sea. During one dive at a location within the Bermuda Triangle, he thought he was going to find an ancient ship but instead found something that continues to stump researchers and Daryl himself. He came across a very strange structure that wasn't like anything he had ever seen before. This structure had long obtrusions which stuck out from its sides, and the whole thing was covered in corals, so whatever this thing is, it has been down there for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Daryl has said, quote, There's identical formations in three different areas, and they don't look nature-made. They don't look man-made. Certainly nothing I've ever seen based on my experience, and I have have years of experience at doing this. We've identified multiple different types of shipwreck material. This doesn't match or look anything like that. End quote. People have started speculating that this structure may just be the remains of a crashed UFO. If it isn't, then what else could it be? I'm feeling open to suggestions, so let me know. In our number 7 spot today, we have a giant squid attack. While diving into the deep sea in a submarine, there's quite a few things that could go wrong. Some are certainly scarier than others, but I'm going to go ahead and say that being attacked by a giant squid is somewhere on the list of bad ones. Maybe not life-threatening since you're in a submarine, but still absolutely terrifying. That is what happened to a pair of Greenpeace submariners while on an expedition in 2004 in the Bering Sea between Russia and Alaska. The squid sprays ink and is clearly quite stressed out, which I'll admit is actually kind of sad to see. It isn't quite clear exactly why the squid was in this area, as it is quite far north for its usual habitat, but it was there nonetheless. Researchers aren't exactly sure what kind of squid it was for sure, but all they know is that it was very, very large. I think it's safe to say that those people were glad that they were in a submarine that day. 
day. In our number six spot today, we have the massive Siphono 4. Okay. I'm not saying that this is going to be scary to everyone, but I'm not gonna lie. Knowing that things like this exist in the deep sea is absolutely terrifying to me. So there are these things called siphonophores that exist in the ocean, and they appear to be a singular multicellular organism, but they're actually an entire colony of polyps and medusoids that are collectively known as a zooid. So a few years ago, scientists found the longest siphonophore they've ever found, and it was a whopping 154 feet long. Yep, just a huge long piece of a bunch of different little creatures all working together. I don't know why it freaks me out so much. Maybe it's because it's a bunch of creatures that all seem as though they share a brain. Maybe it's something I just can't comprehend. Or maybe it's because this thing is 154 feet long. Regardless of whatever it is, the deep sea is just as fascinating as it is terrifying. In our number five spot today, we have dying coral reefs. In 2009, after a four week expedition, to explore the deep ocean just southwest of Tasmania. While there were many exciting discoveries, there was also one that was much more grim. The scientists found deep water coral reefs, but in the same moment as the excitement came the realization that these coral reefs are dying. There needed to be much more research into exactly what was causing the reef systems to die, but the worry was that whatever the cause was would extend into the shallower reefs as well, which would cause massive problems for both marine life as well as human life. Scientists needed to figure out whether the coral was dying because of ocean warming, disease, or increasing ocean acidity. Whatever the cause, if it were to extend into the shallower coral reefs and cause those to die off as well, 25% of marine life would lose their habitat, the coastal fishing industry would collapse, coastal tourism economies would shrink, coastlines would erode, we wouldn't have the same access to submarine animals which have helped us with medical breakthroughs, and honestly the list just continues on. So while this one might not currently seem like a scary addition to to this list, it could have many more implications than we are even aware of. In our number four spot today, we have this deep sea feast. As it turns out, deep sea feasts are quite a horrific sight, as this video footage from a deep dive expedition will show you. This is the scene that scientists were welcomed to on a deep diving expedition that took place in 2019. What you are seeing is dozens of octopuses mercilessly devouring the four to five meter long remains of what is believed to have been a baleen whale. Their meal includes some of the internal organs, while large scavengers Scavengers are stripping away the flesh, and those good old zombie worms are diving into their favorite meal, the lipids and fat from the bones. While this is a grisly sight, I guess it's nice to know that nothing goes to waste in the deep sea. In an environment where food is scarce, this must have been a pretty big win for all of these creatures. Still, seeing video footage of it is pretty wild. In our number three spot today, we have the long arm squid. The long arm squid is not often seen, and thank goodness for that because they are so unbelievably freaky. They can be found in many different oceans, but they live in the permanently dark zone of the ocean around 1,219 meters or 4,000 feet deep in the sea. On November 11th, 2007, as an ROV was searching around the deep waters in the Gulf of Mexico, it was able to catch one of these guys on film. While there is still a ton that remains a mystery about these elusive creatures, it is believed that they can grow to be around 23 feet long or over 7 meters. The real creepy stance that these guys have is when they hold out their extremely long appendages perpendicular to their body, which creates a sort of elbow look. I don't know, just freaks me out. Imagine waking up and having a giant squid with elbows floating around your room. I know that won't happen, but I'm just saying, imagine. In our number two spot today, we have a squid graveyard. During a 2012 expedition into the Gulf of California on the seafloor, scientists came across a ton of squid carcasses and squid egg sheets, which was a bit of a scary sight, but they made a note of it, captured their footage, and just continued on. In 2015, when they returned to the same area, they found even more, and now they really had to ask themselves, why was this happening? Well, they then took a look at the squid's life, and things started to make a little bit more sense, although it is still unclear. So, many species of squid will see the adults all join in large groups to spawn and lay clusters of eggs on the sea floor. Shortly after this, many of the adults pass away. This isn't the case for all squid, however. There are some mothers who instead lay their eggs in an egg sheet, which they keep between their arms for months. When the babies finally
suddenly hatch, the mother will then drift her way down to the sea floor. So this answers the questions why the squid died, but it doesn't answer the question of why there were so many bodies in one specific zone, and the answer to that still remains a mystery. This is however an important part of the underwater ecosystem as these squid carcasses then become food for the other animals that live in the area such as crabs, sea stars, ratfish, and other crustaceans and bottom dwelling scavengers. In our number one spot today we have the guardians of the underworld. I'm here asking you why there are so many insanely large creatures in the deep sea. I know, deep sea gigantism, but still. Why? So here we are talking about another insanely large creature. This time it's a jellyfish, which has been nicknamed the Guardian of the Underworld. This creature can reach 10 meters or 33 feet in length, and despite its enormous size, it isn't usually caught on camera. Thanks to the Mbari's ROV, however, more video footage was able to be captured of this amazing and terrifying jelly. In the 27 years that the Mbari's ROV has been patrolling the deep sea, they've only observed this animal seven times. So so it really does feel kind of special that we get a chance to take a peek at this thing in its natural habitat. While those long billowy things coming off of it appear as though they would be stinging tentacles, they're actually more like arms that help with feeding. It is thought that they use these massive arms to envelop their unsuspecting prey and that was all I needed to hear to swear off the ocean forever. The red colouring of these jellies helps them blend into the dark backdrop of the sea making them a perfect predator. A member of the Mbari team said, quote, it's one of the largest invertebrate predators known in the ocean, yet little is understood about its ecology and behavior." End quote. So like many of the other deep sea creatures on today's list, there is still so much more to learn about these guys. Mm -hmm.